Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about DNA, RNA, purines, pyrimidines, nucleosides, nucleotides. We talked about DNA replication, and we talked about transcription. What does transcription mean? It means converting the DNA into RNA. But the RNA is not ready yet. In the beginning, we call it heterogeneous RNA. We're trying to convert the heterogeneous RNA into the ready messenger RNA. How do you do that? By means of post-transcriptional modification. So let's get started. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. The central dogma when you copy the DNA, it's called replication. When you convert it to RNA, it's called transcription. In the beginning, this RNA is heterogeneous nuclear RNA. It cannot leave the nucleus until it matures and becomes mRNA. How can we mature it into mRNA? Post-transcriptional modification. To convert it from heterogeneous nuclear RNA into messenger RNA, which will take the message from the nucleus, and since it's now mature, it can survive alone in the cytoplasm, so it will exit the nucleus through the nuclear pores, and it will reach the cytoplasm to find the ribosomes so that we can translate the message into amino acids, proteins, and then post-translational modification to get the end result ready for your body to use. What is transcription? Transcription is to take the DNA and to convert it into RNA. In the beginning, it's heterogeneous nuclear RNA, and then it will become messenger RNA. Remember that we started with the DNA coding strand, the original one, also known as the sense strand. Then we copied it into DNA template strand, also known as antisense. And then you take the DNA template and make it into RNA by a process of transcription. Who's the hero here? DNA dependent RNA polymerase number two. Recall that RNA polymerase 1 is for rRNA, the number one most abundant RNA in your body. RNA polymerase 2 is for mRNA, which will transfer the message from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And RNA polymerase 3 is for the tRNA, which has the anti-codon. tRNA is also very tiny. DNA polymerase versus RNA polymerase. DNA polymerase makes DNA nucleotides during replication of DNA. But RNA polymerase makes, guess what? RNA nucleotides during transcription. Who needs a primer? DNA does. Who has proofreading capabilities? DNA does. Okay, so after replication, transcription, we have this heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Let's convert it into the mature messenger RNA, which can leave the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm. How do you do this? Post-translational modification. What do you mean? I mean three things mainly. Number one, splice the bad guys out. Who are the bad guys? The introns. And then step two, add a cap at the five prime end. Step three, add a tail at the three prime end. The tail is at the three prime end. We're done with transcription. Now let's make the mRNA mature. Here is the heterogeneous nuclear RNA, immature. Why do you call it immature? because it still has the bad guys, which are the introns. It doesn't have a cap here, and it doesn't have a tail here. Let's modify it then. After transcription, I modify the hnRNA to become mRNA. Let's go. Step one, splice the bad guys out. The introns are the bad guys, because they interfere in the process of translation. But the exons are the good guys, because exons are expressed into meaningful amino acids, which will become meaningful, useful proteins. Okay, let's kick that intron in the nuts and throw it in the trash. Who is going to splice it out? Guess what? The body that splices. Spliceosome. Soma means body. Splice is to splice. Where do you cut? A splice site here, near the five prime end and a splice site here, closer to the three prime end, so that I can excise 
and remove the intron and then throw it in the trash. While going to the trash, it acquires this lasso-like shape called lariat. You said we're going to throw the intron into the trash. What do you mean by the trash? I mean the nucleus, because the nucleus will degrade that intron, because we're still in the nucleus, remember? Eukaryotes are amazing. They have gazillion proteins. How did they manage to produce such a variety of different types of proteins, even though we have a limited number of genes? The answer is alternative splicing. I will splice this protein this way and this one this way, and this one this way, splicing variety, known as alternative splicing, which increase the variety of proteins produced, which increases genetic diversity. There was step one, the splicing. Next, let's go to step two, adding a cap at the five prime end. Hey, son, you've been dating this wonderful lady for a while. When are you going to put a cap on it? I mean, to put a ring on it. Haven't we heard this before so many times? He's going to put a ring on it in a five-star hotel. That's rich. Yeah, just like 7-methylguanylate triphosphate cap. That's the name of the ring. I mean the cap. The dude was so wealthy, he gave her a ring. 7 carat. It was a multi-granulated prize that she treasured three times. 7-methylguanylate triphosphate. 7-MG3P. Why do I care about the 5' prime cap? It protects the mRNA from degradation. Oh, that's amazing. And it is recognized by the ribosome as the beginning site so that the ribosome can start here at AUG not anywhere before it we start here baby at the cap and aug will become translated into methionine and that was the second step third step polyadenosyl tail let's add a tail made of adenine like gazillions of them at the three prime end which is here remember that the tail is at the three prime end and this was step Three. After splicing and capping, we need to tail. Why should I care about the polyadenosyl tail? For two reasons. Number one, it also protects mRNA from degradation. Number two is an amazing story. Think of your mRNA as a time bomb. You know the time bomb? As time passes by, this wire or cord decreases in size, shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until boom, we explode. The longer the tail, the more we're gonna last and survive. The shorter the tail, however, the shorter we're going to stay. The exact same thing happens. This nascent mRNA is vulnerable. To what? To degradation by enzymes. But the tail is protective because the tail buys us time so that the mRNA can last long enough to be translated. Without the tail, the mRNA will be shortened quickly and will be eaten quickly by those degradation enzymes, which means the longer the tail, the longer mRNA is going to last because now it takes longer to degrade all of this long tail, which means the greater the protection for mRNA, which means, lucky for us, you're going to translate your mRNA into meaningful proteins. Quick review. Recall that sickle cell disease was a missense point mutation. But cystic fibrosis disease was a frame shift mutation, namely deletion. Beta thalassemia, however, is a splice site mutation. It's a spliceosome defect. To learn more about beta thalassemia, check out my hematology playlist here on YouTube. What do you mean by splice site defect? I mean, I could not splice the bad guys out, which means the introns are going to persist in my RNA, interfere with protein synthesis, which means I'll be unable to make proteins, namely beta-globin. That's why we called it beta-thalassemia. Beta, because we have a defect in the beta-globin protein. Thalassemia. Emia means blood because it's an anemia. It's a blood disorder. Thalassus means C. 
referring to the Mediterranean Sea, because beta thalassemia is relatively more common around the Mediterranean, including my home country, Egypt. Mild beta thalassemia is usually a splicing defect. Blame the spliceosome. Severe beta thalassemia, however, is usually a nonsense mutation, which is a point mutation, which gives us what? Stop the nonsense. Stop codons, such as UAG, UAA, or UGA, which leads to stopping, cessation of protein synthesis, and I will end up with defective beta globin. If I have a problem in my globin, I will have a problem in my hemoglobin. Watch my previous biochemistry video on cooperativity to learn more about your hemoglobin structure and function. If you like this video, I have many premium courses on my website, such as this general pharmacology course, which teaches you about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. If you want to learn about your kidneys, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, titratable acidity, clearance, micturition, etc., download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.